Hey guys, I'm sure coming at you today, Ray Shadow Legends, with another champion guide, this time on Night Queen Crixia. One of the best champions inside the entire game, in my opinion, the best. And today, we're going to go ahead and try her out and talk about what makes her so freaking good in this game. First, a few shout outs to you guys. We have Alex, build request, Night Queen, uh, Queen Crixia, maybe on Hydra Focus build. Since she's basically a better version of Yumeko, I don't know, trying to find a way to beat Hydra. We get Joe Gray looking for some Acrixia. We have Sigma Epsilon looking for some Night Queen along with Ivy Lee. Ivy Lee, any relation? Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this mythical and see what she does. So Night Queen is a Knight Revenant uh, champion. Here she goes, the only mythical champion in Knight's Revenant. Uh, here's her first form in terms of the aesthetics here. She's got a little bit of a, uh, a Morrigan vibe here with the hair kind of almost like it's underwater, right? Aesthetically, pretty cool, right? The base form, she's got somebody upside down on the uh, the shield. It looks like a perfect kind of an occultist uh, shield. Uh, she really does match everything about the aesthetic of Knight's Revenant. Uh, and then her, her other form, you can see, is even more uh, just badass, I guess, for lack of a better word. She's got the beautiful wings. Uh, she's got kind of a, a, I don't know, a little bit of a, what's her face? Thea the Tomb Angel uh, uh, halo crown thing going on here as well. Uh, so yeah, aesthetically very, very cool on both forms, no doubt. So what does she do? First off, her base stats, uh, 110 base speed, 1266 base uh, defense, 1189 attack, and 21k on the HP. Both of her stats are going to be the same in both, or her stats, excuse me, are going to be the same in both forms. Uh, when we go to take a look at her A1 on base form, okay, form one, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 60% chance, when booked, of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. Uh, this is great in, in, in clan boss against any buffs that we want to extend, obviously, buffs, right? So uh, it's a really solid A1, specifically against single target, namely bosses. On the A2, Doom Lantern. This is a three-turn cooldown when booked. And keep in mind, we are booking out Ignore Resistance, which is very handy, especially in the arena. Uh, place a decreased resist... Actually, it's handy everywhere, right? Place a decreased resistance... And a block buffs debuff on all enemies for two turns. Also decreases each target's turn meter by 20%. So we get the turn meter decrease by 20%, which is really good. The decreased resistance and the block buffs all in a three turn cooldown. On Deathly Apparition, her A3 ability, four turn cooldown, and again, we can book it to ignore some resistance. Attacks all enemies, removes all buffs from all enemies. Also increases the cooldown of all enemy skills by three turns. It's a little, uh, I don't know, well, it's a buff stripper, right? A buff remover and a little Yameko in there as well. Decreased cooldowns by three turns, okay? So a very, very powerful ability. A great opening move in the arena as well. Good against Hydra because it's just removing buffs from enemies, so you still get a lot of utility out of it. Uh, and then on her passive on the base form, immune to stun debuffs. Increases champion's accuracy by one for every two resistance they have, which is great. Even if you build, uh, you know, an easy 200 resistance on her, you bump up a nice 100 accuracy, which is certainly going to help you out on the A2 uh, and then on the A3. Once they have the, or excuse me, on the A3 and then on the A2, once they have the decreased resistance, everything's going to be smooth sailing from there, unless, of course, it's cleansed, right? Uh, but... It won't be cleansed if all of their skills are on cooldown. Okay, we have a resistance in all battles by 80 on the aura. Now let's flip. On Blade Wing, her A1 ability on the second form. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 60% chance of decreasing the duration of all debuffs on a random ally by one turn. So it's similar. It's like the inverse of the A1 on the, the, the base form, right? Reign of Damnation is a three-turn cooldown. Again, it's kind of an inverse ability as the A2 on the base form. We attack all enemies. We place a block debuffs instead of a block buffs on all allies. And then an increased resistance instead of a decreased resistance on all allies. So we get the opposite, the corresponding, if you will, buffs to the debuffs that we're using on the, uh, the base form. We're also filling the turn meter by 20%, the exact opposite of the base form. Really cool. So obviously block debuffs, increased resistance, 
and a turn meter fill on one ability is very, very powerful. And then we have Night Purge. It all comes together with the opposite of the A3. That's right. Removes all debuffs from all allies, so a full cleanse on a five-turn cooldown. And then decrease the duration of all ally skills by three turns. So the other half of the Yumeko ability with the cleanse on this form, man. She's doing so much, it's hard to even keep track. Uh, immune to sleep debuffs in this form. Increases champion speed by one for every 10 resistance they have, stacks up to 50. So again, really solid, uh, you know, a nice 100 uh, resist in there, you get a nice 10 speed, which isn't bad at all. Speed is everything in this game, so she can be super, super fast, and she has that great base speed as well. So, I mean, there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, building her with a lot of resistance is a great idea. Uh, because again, we have resistance accuracy bonus and a resistance speed bonus vis-a-vis -vis both of these passives and in addition to being immune to sleep and stun in each various form. So man, I mean, what is she all about here? Like, what is she doing? Does she have lore? She does have lore as well. Well, she's all about control, right? Obviously. And disrupt. Control and disrupt and buff right she's doing so much turn meter control turn meter manipulation a uh, boost and negative on the enemies we have buff stripping we have cleansing we have cooldown increased cooldown decrease uh we have block debuffs we have block buffs we have re increase and decrease resistance we have extensions of debuffs on the target we have a decrease uh debuffs on allies there's a lot there. There's a lot there, and there's so many cool ways to build this champion. She's incredibly good. Uh, again, I, I think that she's probably, you can make an argument, the most wanted champion in the game. Uh, to that end, I am shocked to see that they give her a four, or on hellhades.com, they rank her a four uh, overall rating. Uh, I could not disagree more strongly there. I think she's a five, uh, and it's not even close. She's... I think it's unfair to say she's a better version of Yumeko. She's quite different. You know, Yumeko's A2 with the Hex and the Deflect is obviously unique and different. Uh, Yumeko has both the, you know, decrease and the increase on the same skill, which can have its advantages and disadvantages, right? But we add the cleanse onto that and the buff strip onto that and everything else that we spoke about. So in terms of overall versatility, you know, she brings so much everywhere. You can run Night Queen everywhere and anywhere in the game. There's no area where she wouldn't be able to help you out. From Seer, instant activation teams, to Arena, to Hydra, to Dungeons, you name it, you can benefit from a kit like this. You know, she's got something for you everywhere. And more often than not, she has multiple amazing things, right? Even the buffs, the turn meter fill, and the reset cooldowns is extremely valuable. Uh... They give her a five in, in Hydra. Clan Boss three, she's a five in Clan Boss, you know? I mean, it's not meta right now to run like a Vizier Ovelis team, right? But she has a double hit a ch a chance at increasing 60%, increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target, and then everything we already spoke about, right? So really good Clan Boss, really good Hydra, really good Spider. Hard Mode Dungeons, I mean... If you like a Kaimar for resets, you'll like her. She's a five out of five in hard mode ice golem, not a one. Uh, a fire knight, she has a double hitter, reset cooldowns. You know, I'd maybe give her a three and a half or a four in fire knight hard. Uh, dragon hard five, spider hard five if you want to reset, you know. Uh, okay, doom tower. Again, I'm, I'm going to stop repeating it over and over again, but you can use her absolutely everywhere in the game. Dark Face is a 5 out of 5. So yeah, I definitely disagree with these rankings quite a bit. Uh, if we go to gold, gold 4, you can see our pick rate is 11%. It keeps going up like by 1% every day as more people get their hands on this champion. Her ban rate is 45%. That's the highest in the game. Yumeko and Warlord at 41% at the time of this recording. And her win rate is one of the highest in the game as well in Live Arena. Uh, Live Arena right now is not open, I don't think. If it is, we'll play it. Uh, she has a 4 attack on her AoE. If you build her for a little bit of damage, she can deal a little bit of damage because she does have that AoE attack and 4 is not a bad multiplier at all. She has base attack, which is pretty solid, around 1100, 1200. Uh, however, I'm not focusing on damage as like the biggest thing that I want to get out of this champion, right? I want to get all that, all that control. To that point, they recommend using Temporal Chains. 
uh, Polymorph on, on alternate form and Brimstone uh, as a debuffer. Uh, we'll talk about those. I like Polymorph because I love her in the arena. Uh, obviously, if you're using her primarily outside the arena, well, if you have her, I mean, she's going to be a hard carry in the arena, no doubt about it. And I think that Polymorph is going to be fine, you know. Uh, however, you could definitely go, you know, Temporal Chains or Brimstone. I think all of these are fine uh, suggestions. Um, okay, they recommend every artifact set known to man on her, basically. And she is so versatile that it's hard to disagree with that, with that uh, you know, depending on where you want to use her. You could go you know, resist build. You could go Righteous gear. I think that Righteous is probably the best set on her because think about it, for every 40 resist you get from a two-piece Righteous and you get the 10% speed bonus and then you get the accuracy and the speed off of the passives. So I think that Righteous is the absolute best set for this champion. Uh, however, you do have some options. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we have her built here, guys. Sorry that it took 10 minutes just going over a kit, but Mythical's... That's how it's going to be here on the channel, right? I mean, there's a lot going on with these champions. There's a lot going on. It's funny, in the very beginning, when Mythicals were released, I remember a lot of people saying, ah, they're not that much better than, than Legendaries, and, like, you know, Taurus and Reachgar are still better and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people are starting to come around, and some of the new Mythicals they've released have been amazing as well. Lady Makage... I think she's a top 10 champion in the game as well. She's incredibly good, and she's a fusion for everybody. Permanent, not an easy fusion, but I would rather, I would sacrifice Kira and, and Tatsu or whatever uh, in a second for her. Uh, ideally, you keep them and, and fuse another copy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I digress. Uh, okay, so I have her in, in double perception and a speed set. Now, as to my point earlier... I actually want to get her out of one of these perception sets and into a righteous, maybe more. But what I did with on Night Queen was I played her or I built her kind of like a, a, a Yameko or a Warlord. Basically, my very best speed gear. And I didn't need to go super hard on accuracy as nor hard as I normally would on, say, Yameko or Warlord, because she does benefit from that passive anyway. Uh, anyway. Total stats here, you'll note the first thing. She's my fastest champion on my account for good reason. She's incredible at 388 speed. Now, obviously, most people aren't going to be able to get to that speed on her. Build her as fast as you can. I really want her to be my first champion up to 100 speed. Uh, but there's another case to be had where... We don't need to build her like ultra, ultra fast. We can just rely on an Arbiter, a Term Meter Booster, a Shuzen, the Valorous, uh, to boost her up to this necessary speed, right? Normally, we put our best speed gear on our speed boosters, not our reset uh, cooldown champions, and boost into them. The reason I'm doing it differently is because I was lucky enough to pull a six-star Awakening on Crixia, and that allows me to just get her way higher with a 20 speed from the Blessing, you know? So even with all my best speed gear, I still can't build a Shuzen faster, you know, than 388, anywhere close to that number. So that's why I have it this way on my account, if you were curious. Anyway, I digress. We do have accurate on the banner speed i wonder if i have any hopefully you guys don't mind chilling with me a little bit today i kind of want to go in here and min max the build a little bit because i mean this is what this is what i enjoy out of this game right it's just trying to build the most min maxed insanely good uh champion possible right so i want to set priority as my speed i do want to go accuracy uh however let me just see what I got for resistance, because if I have a speedier resistance uh, banner, it might behoove me to go for it. But unfortunately, I have neither. This is the fastest banner that I have on my account, uh, which is not that fast compared to the rest of the gear on her. I do have a four speed. Do I have a six? No, nah, I'm not going to. If I had a six star glyph, I would tempt myself to go uh, to try for an eight. You know, well, 392 is a massive difference, you know. Uh, anyway. HP uh, with some defense on the amulet. We have HP with some HP, some good defense rolls there on the ring as well. Uh, we have speed on the boots, obviously. Looking for accuracy, looking for resist as substats there. Can probably find a better speed boots in perception with some resistance. Again, when building this champion, I think I, well, obviously, I neglected resistance a little bit too much. I have a flat stat HP chest 
And again, this is a situation where it is speed in a speed set with a trip speed roll. That's why I have a flat stat and I have a percentage HP as an ascension stat. But who knows? Maybe, just maybe, I'll go like it does stats don't even primary stat doesn't even matter that much. Maybe, just maybe, we have a faster one in resistance or something like that. So we have. Yeah, basically everybody would be standing to lose speed no matter what we put on her chest. However, if I have a good resistance, she may benefit from the resist. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, that that passive, right? But I don't really have any good resistance gear here. Let me just check just to see my fastest resistance speed gear. But I think I want to go in and I really want to mess around with Righteous. I digress, though, for right now, guys. Uh, speed gear is going to do just fine. We have defense, trip speed roll. You can take a look at my best speed gear on my account, guys. I have a trip speed with a max 8 on the gauntlets. I have a trip speed with a 7 on the speed shield. I have a trip speed with an 8 on the helmet. And I have a quad speed with a 7 on the, uh, the, the weapon. Uh, so... Again, if I had to critique, we could definitely stand to get a little bit uh, more resistance. We get the speed and the accuracy there anyway. Uh, we did come down and pick up Eagle Eye Mastery, but again, I'm thinking resist might be the way to go. Get a little bit extra speed on that second form, you know? Uh, but either way, I think this is fine. Let me see what Hell Haiti recommend or the, the website recommends here. Uh, let's see. Base form, they go War Master. Uh, I'll show you guys. So this would be maybe a good Hydra uh, build for her, you know, going a little bit of War Master, trying to get a little bit more damage. Uh, let's see, alternate form, they give basically the exact same thing, I think. No, accuracy versus HP. Uh, skill lockouts, they go defense and they go support. They don't give a tier 6 mastery, though. Uh, skill reset, again, no tier 6 mastery. It looks like they're going to come down and grab, I don't know. Timely intervention, I suppose. Uh, either way, guys, I like the build that we went with here. I like the counterattacks because of all that utility on the A1s on both forms, right? And on the support, again, going down with Eagle Eyes, fine. Or we could come down unshakable. You could argue either way. I really am interested in uh, what a higher resist Crixia build would look like on my account specifically. Uh, but I already told you basically why I don't have that built. All right, guys. So there it is. We talked about blessings already. I have Polymorph on her. That is a 20% chance of placing an irresistible sheep debuff plus the speed, defense, and resistance, which is great. Let's go ahead and try her out, guys. So let's start in, of course, the arena, right? I'm going to play a little bit of a Hydra crazy reset damage team, a Trunda team, just so you can kind of get a sense for what she's doing. Uh, but uh, here's the team that I have her on, Lady Mikage. I have Naragu, and I have Arbiter as well. Uh, let's go ahead and see her in action here, guys. We'll face a bunch of arena teams. I'm not going to show you that whole Hydra run because it takes me about an hour to do because it's all manual, which is so annoying. But it's insane damage, so it's worth it. Okay, so I have Imperial Decree of Lady Mikage on this team, and I'm actually going to go after their Bomber. I like this ability because it puts increased crit damage on our Nuker and it increased attack to set up Naragu. Uh, he's going to come in here and nuke down as well. Uh, the Reviver stays alive, so does Rodos. But the cool thing is, is we already came in here and we removed all their buffs, right? And we reset their cooldowns. So they can't do much. They can't revive. They can't, they're, they're neutralized for three turns at least, right? So now we have a choice. We can come back in here and uh, Metamorph and basically go in and reset cooldowns and do it all over again, kind of like a Kaimar. But sometimes, if they have a buffer on their team, I like to put a decrease resistance block buffs and decrease their turn meter at the same time. In this case, though, they have a cleanser on their team, too. So he'll have his Python will have his cleanse before his revive. So it wouldn't really make that much sense to go in there and uh, go with the A2. Uh, on this side of things, we have a choice again. We can reset our cooldowns, we can cleanse all our allies, or we can come in and place a block debuffs and an increased resistance and a turn meter fill on all allies. There's no debuffs that we're going to be worried about with these two champions alive. Uh, I mean, there's no reason to have increased resistance either. So for that reason, we're just going to go with Night Purge and reset the cooldowns. That way we'll have a fresh ally attack as well as a... Ooh, 
wait, wait, wait. One turn away. Five, I don't have her booked out. That's why. I'm like, why is it one turn away? I have no books on Lady Makage because mythical skill tomes are so freaking hard to come by. So it didn't really work out as planned, but we can still come in here and change forms and stun them uh, with the spider Makage. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we land stuns there. That's beautiful. Now we can come in here. May as well. Increase resistance. Block debuffs. Most importantly though for this battle, a turn meter fill. Speaking of turn meter fills, let's go ahead and do it again here. Let's go in with the AoE again and dispatch them. Uh, all right. Is it dispatch them or is that Dirindil? I didn't even see the name of the ability. Let's go against a another tanky team here. This is a Taurus team uh, and a Harima. So very good squad here. Let's go in. Naragu is not in very good gear, so I'm not sure if he's going to be able to hang with all of these, but I figured with Night Queen, things are a lot easier than they normally would be. We don't have to worry about anything. So decrease cooldown on all of the enemies, grab an increased attack, more importantly a turn meter boost because we're going to get the increased attack anyway. And let's go ahead and, I mean we have a choice to make here, we can go after Taurus. We're not going to go after Harima because we have a uh, Magic Infinity Nuker. Uh, we can go after one of their Revivers. Uh, I think we'll go after one of their revivers. Let's go ahead and go after Duchess. She's the right affinity. However, we still do not kill her. We are going to, is it? Oh, it's faster than the eye. Dispatch them is Dirindil. So she goes in there. She does some pretty nice damage uh, to, or he, excuse me, does some pretty nice damage to Harima as well, which is really nice. Uh, so here I am actually going to go in and place a decreased resistance. Most importantly, I want that turn meter decrease so I can get in here, revive my dude. And well, that wasn't actually worth it there because now they're just going to, he's going to die immediately. So, but hey, the cool thing is, is her kit is so strong that it can even make up for our mistakes, right? Uh, which is beautiful. So we're going to metamorph here. We're going to stun them again with the A2. And why do I say that? I say that because now we can just come in and night purge and she has a revive right back up again, right? So we revive, and this time we can set things up nicely with an increased turn meter as well. We can come in here and we can refresh all of our buffs, make sure they're fresh on uh, Naragu. And now we should really focus at trying to kill their other reviver because we're going to lose Naragu, that's for sure. Taurus is fierce, eh? Oof. Yeah, that's going to be tough to break through to Pytheon, huh? We should have ran a Sun Wukong or a Nogdar or somebody similar in this position. Uh, but hey, we still might win because she's that good. So we're going to Metamorph back again, guys. Now they have their cooldowns and blah, blah, blah. We're going to come and we're going to reduce everything all over again, right? Now we can kill Harima. Hopefully. <laughs> all right. So... Gonna come in, A2, block buffs on everybody. We're gonna revive yet again. Uh, Taurus is gonna kill yet again. <laughs> uh, but maybe we can get lucky one of these times here and neutralize Taurus. He's neutralized right now with his sleep vis-a-vis -vis the A1 of Lady Makage, but uh, still dies in the Ragu. Man, this is a battle, huh, guys? <laughs> I really should run somebody. I was trying to get cute with the Narago run, and uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe. I love that we don't have a lot of accuracy on Lady. I mean, we do have a decent amount of accuracy, but not a ton. She's a PvE build right now, uh, but I love the decreased resistance. It, it allows us to land, obviously, all of our debuffs without having to worry. And speaking of everything else, I, I know this is a long super arduous battle here guys it might be tedious but i actually like it because it's demonstrating her whole entire kit and what she can bring to the table so again she's back to night purge again so we can you guessed it revive and this time we have the cover of the stun so that we're insured to actually get off an attack with uh naragu uh so let's uh i guess yeah let's stun again why not right why not all right, let's come in here, do a little bit more damage. And now, I don't know, can we, yeah, we should be able to kill, not, oh yeah, we kill, we kill uh, Duchess, that's good. And it took us forever, but we're going to win the battle, right? Let's switch forms with Lady Mikage, let's go in with the ally attack again, and let's just make sure we take care of Pytheon here, right? 
It's a Pythion dead, and then there was one. Now, Taurus could still kill everybody with one constant pressure move. So, we want to come in here, and we want to try to take care of him before he gets there. And there we go. So, again, guys, that's, you know, uh, Naragu, uh, Nagorio. Why do I always call him Naragu, man? I'm sorry. Nagorio, Nagorio, Naragu, Nagorio. I don't know, man. <laughs> it sounds like it should be Naragu. All right, let's go in. This is a super, super tanky, stupid troll team. Uh, but this time they do have, let's, let's put in Nogdar. I feel like he's a better fit on this team. And you know my love for Nogdar, right? Uh, Sun Wukong could fit in the same way here. But let's go this. And, and the cool thing is we'll try a couple different teams here, guys. I know this video is going super long, but I don't know. I love, I love uh, Night Queen. So, <laughs> all right, let's come in here. Remove. We have a 50-50 shot, obviously, at removing Stone Skin as well. Didn't work out there, but it's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and ally attack. Uh, you know who's annoying? Emic Trunkheart. Let's try to get rid of him. And we do. Great. Uh, they can't revive him again because, well, they have the... Uh, let's. You know, who do we want to kill here? Let's kill... Uh, mm, yeah, let's just kill uh, Pythion, right? Boom. Dead. We're back to life. And now we just have to wait for the stone skin to fall off of UDK. Uh, yeah, like I said, guys, we'll try one more combo after this one. Let's do, let's get Nodar out of here, even though he's super strong and I love him so much. Let's go with, uh, let's go with a bomb team. We haven't highlighted many bomb teams here on the channel. Uh, going to be doing a Gaius the Gleeful guide really soon. Maybe later on this week, maybe next week. So be on the lookout for that. I think he's really good, specifically in Sand Devil. Uh, because he has the sleep and the bombs on the same ability, you know, which is really cool. Uh, but he's great in the arena, too. He's still my favorite arena bomb champion. I would like to see a bomb mythical. A bomb mythical champion is something I'd really love to see. All right, let's go against this squad here. Uh, but as I mentioned, let's get Gaius. We have plenty of increased attack on the team. Let's get, let's put Shuzen in there, too. We're going to have a... a as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, we're going to have a guide on her coming up later this... Tomorrow, actually, it should be. Uh, so be on the lookout there. So we'll put Shuzen the lead, just to switch things up a little bit. And then, uh, I think I have Gaius. Oh, I think he's empowered a bit. Yep, okay, cool. So let's come in here and see if we can protect the team. The cool thing is, too, is we don't have any bolster or anything like that. We do have a stone skin on Gaius. Uh, but with no cooldowns, you know... We're pretty golden, right? They can't do anything, is what I'm saying. There's no real need for stone skin. Uh, let's go ahead and take down... Let's take down Rodos, man. Nope. Uh, close, though. All right, let's go ahead and place those bombs. Let's come in here and... I actually like the idea of coming in and immediately resetting cooldowns now. So we can go back in with an ally. We can go back in with everything, essentially. So this time, we can do something really cool here, right? So they have, uh, I guess, Arbiter. We can kill anybody. I mean, the bombs are going to kill them anyway. They don't have a uh, a cleanser on the team who's not already CC'd. So uh, we can do anything here. I was going to give try to get cute and give an instant turn. Let's do it. Let's give an instant turn to Night Queen here. Now we can come in. And we can kill Rodos, put block debuffs and everything on my team. Uh, let's go ahead and switch forms. Let's go ahead and a three here. She has a buff removal as well, as you saw. Let's come in here and again try to land those bombs. This time they did land on UDK. And uh, yeah, bomb teams. I think that they're. I think they're really good. Uh, I said that Gaius was the best bomb champion, but I'm a big fan of Nishak as well. I think that he's right up there, uh, but uh, they're quite different too. They're quite different. So Gaius the Gleeful is pretty cool. He has an instant activation on his A3 at single target, but let's see if he uses it here, depending on... Nah, he goes right back to the A2, and everybody's dead. All right, guys, 
we've messed around a lot here. So guys, real quick before Hydra, uh, she's a great Seer activator as well as an, uh, or a reactivator, I should say, because of the reset, as well as an Eleanoril, a Theodore, a Sissia, whoever you're, our attack, whoever you're trying to get another uh, reset out of, especially Seer, I really love her on these teams over to Yumeko or a Kaimar, even in some situations, if you don't need the turn meter boost on Seal of Magic, uh, because she brings some buffs to the table as well, right? Which we really want. Uh, she, she brings the uh, the increased resistance, which is hard to find elsewhere, right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, open up with Metamorph as the first choice. And then we are going to come in and actually what we could do here, I think it would be better on, on round one, is just not use Night Purge and she'll automatically go into Reign of Damnation, which is going to go ahead and give Block Debuffs an increased resistance specifically, which will help activate Seer. On round two, we are going to open with Night Purge. And then on way, round three, we can do whatever the heck, right? So we will uh, open there. That's cool. On Kaimar... Round two, he is not going to use his Seal of Magic. Round three, he will open with his Seal of Magic. There we go. All right, let's see how this team does. And then we'll go into a quick, you know, minute or two of Hydra. So she switches forms. She comes in. She places some nice buffs on everybody. We get even more buffs. And then Seer says Sayonara, 300k damage. Not too bad. We're going to do the same thing. We go in there, this time with Night Purge. So we're able to, uh, you know, reactivate Seer, reset the cooldowns. And now it's going to be Kaimar's job. So we come in there with the A2. We buff up again. Uh, we Seal of Magic. And it is, wait, why did why did she go in? I, apparently I need to go in and make sure that Seer uses Karma. And we had plenty of buffs to kill all these enemies. Uh, but you guys get the point, right? Seer, end it right now. You should have Karma burned first off. There we go. Uh, so that's how you could use her to activate, uh, get more damage out of Seer and obviously uh, reset her cooldowns. All right, guys. So for Hydra really quickly, I'm not going to do the whole run, but this is the team I'm kind of experimenting with uh, right now. I do want to try to find a way to get a Gurptuck Moss Beard on the team. Why did I just do that? I, I accidentally a one uh, Trying to get a Gurptuck Moss Beard on this team. How would you further optimize this squad here uh let me know so i know i can pull off like one of these insane insane uh damage teams but uh still this is head of decay right yeah uh sorry new rotation as of today uh let's just throw the hex over here let's throw the debuffs up so the first hit's not going to be super overwhelming 2.5 million obviously it's great but it's not you know, not exactly what we're looking for. We're going to metamorph. We're going to come in here and we are going to, I'm going to delay one turn before night purging here. I'm going to place a provoke here and then we're going to keep turn meter boosting. We're going to go ahead and use, we're going to delay on dance of time as well. We're going to use instead her, we're going to use one forge rhythm on Trunda uh, before we use night purge. You can see how many turns she's getting because she's so fast, right? So here is the forge rhythm. Do a little bit more damage. Now I can set her up to for back-to-backs and see some crazy damage, right? So now we're going to go ahead and Dance of Time. Now we do not we do need to redo our buffs, increase speed, so we might as well do a Lydia right there. Come in again with Damnation. Uh, I do want to make sure this, this Provoke stays on this Hydra head, and then we'll Metamorph there on Garrel. And now we can start hammering here for some nice damage, right? So 7 million there. Don't worry, it gets better. Uh, let's go over here. Night Purge time. Reset our cooldowns. We're going to refresh our debuffs here, just so that decapitated head gets their debuffs. We're going to turn meter boost again. We are going to switch forms here. We're going to go in with the A2. Now we got a couple decapitated heads. Fantastic stuff. Let's... Eh, I kind of want to dance a time, but I'm going to be patient and wait one turn. Because I wanted to redo my debuffs, but let's see what we can get on this next, uh, this next A2 here. Well, here it goes. Boom. Nothing too crazy. 17 million compared to what, what she can do. Watch this next go around. So, come in. Now we can start getting some nice uh, Dance of Time. 
Now we can get the debuffs all up. Now she can start hitting. Okay. So. Let's do right over here. So there we go. That's the damage. Now 53 million after eight turns. Everybody's nice and decapitated. I think we're one turn away right now. Are we one turn away from... Ah, uh, we are. We would love to have that Night Purge right now. She could get another one in against the decapitated heads, but maybe we'll still get one. Let's see. Oops. Okay. 55 million. Eh, two heads are going to pop up here. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. Uh, but anyway, guys, you see how she can be effective, not only in Hydra as a uh as a reset you know but moreover as a block buffs and everything else she brings to the table right so now we can reset and cleanse these true fears off uh i don't need to do it just yet oops didn't mean to refresh that but it's okay we're not actually going to keep this run i'm just trying to demonstrate here gonna apply our debuffs yet again and now we have cloak of ages back up so we're gonna target right over here Turn meter booster into her next turn. Here we go again. Boom. Big damage. 70 million in 10 turns. We're going to dance of time it here again. We're going to come in here again. We we have block debuffs. We have uh, uh, increased resistance on everybody as well. Not that we really even need it here. So we lose our number one target. But we're going to go right for the decapitated head right now with one more cloak of ages here. We're already one turn away again from the uh, the A3. And here we go. Another big hitter. Boom. 76 million. Starting to decapitate more heads. And it just keeps going again and again and again and again and again. This is why it takes long, obviously. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, you can't, there, you have to manual this, right? So oh, I was hoping we can kill that last. Okay, now we can kill the last head. I just want to see like one more really big number maybe before I let you guys go. This might be like the longest video here on the uh, on the channel in terms of a guide. Uh, but hey, there's a lot, of t a lot to talk about with this champion, right? So let's Night Purge one more time. Apply all of our debuffs here. And hopefully we can get one more. I'll let you guys go like after 20 turns. So we're almost... We're almost there. Come in with the A2. Refresh all of our buffs. Now, I could be switching forms in between as well, guys. Uh, to place block buffs on the Hydra heads if I didn't have a Trunda, for example, right? Obviously, uh, my strategy would change a little bit in the sense where I would need to use both forms. I'm stating the obvious here because I would need to place block buffs. I would use her as my block buff uh, champion as well. Not to mention the decreased resistance would definitely help me as well. Uh, but I can kind of just, as long as we're killing him quickly, I can kind of just keep rotating like this without having to use it. So we go in A2, 85, and 1, and did I miss a head of Decay Provoke? I did. Uh, well, let's just end it with a Metamorph here. Let's come in with, see how there's some buffs on them now, right? Uh, only a few, but there's a few, right? Uh, we get a weak hit, of course, so cool. They're under the stupid poison cloud. Hate poison cloud. Didn't notice it. So let's just strike over here. And we get a weak hit. All right, guys. We're going to end there. Things got a little bit out of control there. I need to make sure that I'm metamorphing uh, Garyl during Head of Decay rotation. Otherwise, we won't, the team won't die. Because even if somebody dies here, we can just revive with Arbiter and heal and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but... It does slow things down and it, lim it down and it limits our overall damage uh, potential with a team like this if we let the poison cloud uh, go and the cleanse and all that stuff. So uh, anyway, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this guide. Hopefully you enjoyed this champion as much as I clearly do. I think she's an absolute monster. Hey, congratulations. If you have her and you're watching this video till the end, congratulations, because you can let me know what you think, but she's just so amazing she's the definition truly of a game changer i would say uh for any account she does so much 
Can use her, like I said, basically anywhere in this game. Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous champion overall. She definitely power crept a lot of other champions in a big way, in my opinion. Uh, but you can come in here. You can see Night Purge. We're going to cleanse these poisons and the leech and whatever off of everybody. Uh, we can... We wouldn't normally dance of time back to back like this, but I just want to get the revival up. Uh, and we would just kind of, I, I wanted to basically show you how we could recover even if we make mistakes, right? Uh, which is really nice. She's very forgiving. She does so much to the squad. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to see another mythical champion that I have, maybe a more kind of robust, big, long guide, go ahead and let me know. Uh, I have Geralt, who we could do one on. I just need to book her out. I do not have, uh, like I said, any mythical skill tomes at all, so I have no books into her, but I'm happy to go ahead and do so if you guys uh, uh, would find that interesting or if any of you guys have her or i could do maybe even an updated guide with lady mikage i'm not super happy with how the last uh guide turned out on her i just want to get to 100 million damage i'm kind of vamping here one more shot uh forge rhythm what do we get okay close enough guys we'll end there 100 million almost in uh 28 turns definitely not my personal best with this team but i think like i said at the beginning I think we can further optimize things a bit. There it is, 100 mil, guys. We will go ahead and end battle. Take a look at the damage here. Uh, obviously, it's mostly going to be trying to 78 million damage. Geralt, 11 million. But she does get a lot more damage over time. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching till the end of the video. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.